Welcome to the College Football Bros. I'm Michael Newman. And I'm Trey Newman. All right, Dan Mullen was fired by Florida this past weekend. In today's episode, we are going to uh, draft the best candidates to replace him. Uh, but first, Trey, let's let's talk about the the decision itself. Do you think it was a reasonable move to get rid of Mullen after you know the previous three years going pretty well? Yeah, it's it's definitely a shocker. Um, I but I can I can rationalize it just because of the way. Florida was was playing recently like if they had a series of close losses it might I might have felt a little unwarranted just because uh, he seemed to have you know he realized he needed to address the defensive issues he fired Grantham he thought they might build on that for next year but just the way they were losing they were getting destroyed against you know their rival Georgia even South Carolina who's much inferior they were skate playing with fire against Samford and there just seemed to be a little bit of unrest there and they'd only beaten a couple FBS teams this year, Tennessee and Vanderbilt, but it is really an astonishing free fall for the Gators just because literally less than a year ago, they went toe to toe in the SEC championship game with, you know, perhaps the best team ever Alabama. And, and here they are less than a year later. Pretty surprising. Yeah, it is crazy. And the year before they, they beat Georgia, but uh, it, it just did sort of seem that, yeah, things were heading in the wrong direction and I'm kind of okay with them nipping it in the bud. And I think the biggest thing, the biggest downfall of Mullen was recruiting. You know, he, he, because he's not recruiting at an, at an elite level, like Kirby smart is at Georgia, he's not going to get a long leash or he's going to have a very short leash if they were to have a bad season, you know, like happened this year. And, and it turned out to be a very bad season. So I just think he he didn't earn that leeway because you're looking at it's not like you're looking ahead to uh, 2022 and saying, oh, we can't make a move because we're going to lose out on all these great recruits that Dan Mullen had recruited. Well, no, the recruiting class wasn't looking good. So um, I think that that was maybe the the biggest factor there. But uh, let's let's get to the candidates. So uh, you have the first pick here. Who is your number one candidate for Florida? Yeah, and I'm going to take Billy Napier. Uh, from Louisiana, he's well. You know, it okay. seems like he's he's for sure destined for an SEC job, and it seems like obviously this would be the year to jump. Uh, you know, LSU, he's he's being rumored with, and then of course maybe now Florida. I think the Gators would be a good fit. He's got an offensive background which the Gators tend to lean towards, except for Muschamp, uh, a, you know, a couple times ago. But uh, I, I like Napier here. Yeah, and he's learned under Nick Saban, so he's in that mold where recruiting is everything, and he will definitely commit to that. So the I, I feel like Florida, that's going to be a big factor in this search. I don't think they're going to want to go for a guy who you know, is not a fan of recruiting like Dan Mullen. So uh, yeah. I, that would be a great hire, I think. Uh, I'm going to take Lane Kiffin, head coach at <laughs> Ole Miss. I've heard from or just read from some reporters that it doesn't seem like this is very likely to happen for whatever reason, but I think it would be a home run hire. He's, he always has a great offense um, and he's a really good recruiter. So he just kind of hits, hits both check marks there and he's quickly turned Ole Miss into, you know, they might make a new year six bowl this year. So um, he's proven it and back at Florida Atlantic did a great job there. He's I think proven it. Yeah. And his style and personality is kind of, resembles uh Spurrier back in the day yeah. all right so with the third pick here I'm going to take Mario Cristobal um I, I might have him number one on this list if his alma mater hadn't been Miami uh he could wait for that gig to potentially open up at some point and then just kind of ride it out at a at a very good organ job of course he might only have to familiar. wait like a week <laughs> the, exactly I know um but <laughs> That said, he's very familiar with Florida recruiting, would seem to just kill it there uh, on the recruiting trail, just like he's doing currently in Eugene. And his his kind of attitude, I think, would be something that would also go over well with the Gators. For sure. Okay, um, next pick, I think among those that are available, to me it's an easy one, Bob Stoops, the, of course, former Oklahoma coach. He's he's a splashy hire. He's a big name, which I think would help in kind of going toe to toe with with Kirby. Um, he's got 
of course, I'm sure you know, a lot of contacts he could, he could put together a really good staff, I'm sure would attract good coordinators. And when he left Oklahoma, it, it's not like things fizzled out. It's not like kind of a, you know, um, Mac Brown type situation at Texas. Oklahoma was still very good. They were a top five team. He left a great program for, for Lincoln Riley. So I don't think, uh, Stoops's, um, you know, name has kind of soured. It's, he's still a, a great candidate. Yep. And you mentioned he, he had some awesome offensive coordinators there. So I don't think that would be an issue, uh, going to Florida. All right. Now we're getting a little bit lower on the list where it gets a little more difficult. Um, I'm going to take a guy, maybe not as sexy, of course, but it's Bill O'Brien. Um, he always gets mentioned for jobs, whether it be college or pro. He had some decent success at Penn State, and I guess more than decent if you consider the circumstances he inherited. Uh, he's been in Saban's factory now as an offensive coordinator, of course, and we know he can develop good quarterbacks. Uh, he did so with with Hackenberg a little bit at Penn State, and uh, he, you know, he might fit the mold for for Florida. Yeah, I I think we kind of just took a big drop then if we're having to yeah. you know, you're saying settle for for Bill O'Brien. I feel like you don't have to go lower than like Billy Napier. Well, you had him number one, but yeah. I feel like Napier's very gettable. He he's you know it's it's hard to imagine having to uh, you know go for a less attractive candidate than him. But um, my next pick here, because yeah, Bill O'Brien, it it's fine, but. Not super exciting, yeah. but I'll go Luke Fickle, which would be super exciting. Not a That's geographic true. fit, fit, but uh, so maybe he's not interested in in going down to the SEC. But if you were able to get him, I think it could work out really well. Urban Meyer was also not a geographic fit, and he seemed to do just fine at Florida. So he's got the the national name recognition with potentially bringing Cincinnati to the playoff this year. I, I think he would uh, he would work out really well. And it would probably be an instant upgrade defensively for them as well. All right. I'm going to go. It's getting tougher here, of course. I'm going to say Matt Campbell of Iowa State. Now, I know he's lost a little bit of uh, appeal with a you know fairly disappointing season for Iowa State with all that they returned. But he brings an attitude to, a, to the team that I see that seems to be have uh, kind of missing with Florida. I'm not saying Mullen just let the program go go crazy but he he does have a a different personality uh, that he would bring to the table and you do have to kind of keep in mind that even though they had a semi-disappointing season this year at Iowa State last year they won the Fiesta Bowl which is really remarkable when you consider Iowa State's program yeah for sure he's he's a really good coach so it'd be hard to be too disappointed by the hire the one thing I worry about with him is is he willing to uh, you know, recruit in the SEC like you need to. It's maybe he is. Yeah. It's just we haven't had the opportunity to see it at Iowa State, but there is kind of rumors as to whether he would fit at a big time SEC job like that. But uh, my next pick here, I'm going to go Dave Aranda, the head coach at Baylor. He's coached in the SEC as LSU's defensive coordinator, did a great job there, of course, helped them win a national championship. And his year two jump at Baylor has been awesome. He quickly corrected his mistake of of hiring Larry Fedora, I believe, as offensive coordinator, brought in Jeff Grimes, and the offense has taken off. Of course, he knows what to do with the defense. So they're having a, a really great year. And I know it's just one year, so he's not super proven, but that's why he's a little bit lower on the list. That's right. That's right. I oh, that's we, it. That did we, we did him? A, we did a... Yeah, we hit actually uh, for guys. Do you have any other honorable mentions or hear me out? Hear me out. Dan Mullen. Just hire I mean, him back. He's one of the top guys out there. It, it would he's be, a hot uh, candidate. <laughs> it would be really funny if, you know, someone fired their coach and they just whiffed on everybody and they're just like, all right, you know what? Come on back. <laughs> like, you know, we're yeah. just gonna run it back I one mean, more year. He proved he could have some success at Florida. That's true. That's very true. Uh, Mark Stoops is one guy we didn't mention. He's been kind of, I, I think he's a fine sort of backup candidate if you whiff on on all your top guys. Um, but it's to me not the sexiest hire. He's 500 uh, the last 
six years in SEC play at Kentucky, which at Kentucky is very good. So that's why it would be a reasonable hire. But um, I don't know. It's not like you're hiring James Franklin off of Vanderbilt where he just had to kind of a unbelievable, immediate, quick turnaround. It was more of a kind of a slow build at, at Kentucky. So, uh, but, but he's an option. So let us know in the comments below, though, who you think Florida should hire as their next head coach and then who you think that they will end up hiring. But thank you for watching. I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy football in this long weekend, and we will see you next week. You've been watching the College Football Bros. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube and in your podcast app for college football content all year round. For bonus episodes and access to our Discord chat, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash collegefootballbros. Thanks for watching.